feel like a good idea for a YouTube video, or maybe there already is one, would be a simple short layout of the ICD-10 guidelines, not so much to the explanation as there is a, a PVC video. That's right. Uh, okay. I couldn't find a thread for where the post video ideas are. Okay, so this is really, really good. And <clears throat> thank you, Erin. The confusion for Aaron lies that it breaks it down into parts and sections. However, they're spread out. And by the time I get to section C, section one, just when I get to section four, I get thrown off in this random section going on with the conventions. All right. Um, now, one of the things to help you, uh, Aaron, and other people, when you look at the guidelines themselves, they are set up like an outline. So if you go in and you look at the outline from, say, when you were uh, a student, uh, maybe in high school, and I'm cleaning up some of my areas here so that I can pull up those guidelines because I know I have them saved, then what you're going to be able to do is think of the main process, the main topic, and then you're always indenting and giving further information for that topic as you move along. So let me just grab that real quick. Let's see if I can do this without you guys having to. And I'm going to pull up the guidelines. Uh, the ICD-10 guidelines is divided up again in the format of an outline. And even though this is what the outline looks like here, when you get to the other parts of the guideline, you're still just filling in the portions of the guideline. So let's look here at the first, the conventions, because um, our person had mentioned that they see the conventions and then they get a little bit confused. I would urge you to go with the outline first. Now you can download the guidelines without the annotations, right? You can download the guidelines and annotate them by hand after you print them off. I think, honestly, they're usually about, oh, well, this one's 115 pages, but uh, you may or may not want to do that. They are in your manual, though, so you can make the notes in your manuals, or maybe there's a particular area that's confusing. You know you can go in and print one section. Maybe you want to print the section on uh, neoplasms, you know, then you can go in and find that page, and this part of the outline for the guidelines tells you what page that'll be on. Now, just a little hint, this is the page for the paper, not the page number that you're looking at. Like, say I want to jump down here to page uh, nine. If I go to nine, it's not going to be the same as the, the paper, just, just so you know. H however, the guidelines are really quite easy to follow once you get to the hang of it. So let's talk about them. First, we have the conventions. And ultimately, that is how to use your manual. You know, what does the icons stand for? Uh, what is the purpose of the codes themselves? And uh, look here, the seventh character. When you get to the seventh character, especially things like fractures, then we're using those to state whether it's a current fracture or if the fracture is um, healing, a non-union, uh, etc. So then it goes into the punctuation and stuff. You know, honestly, this stuff is what's in your manual. Uh, that first section of the guidelines that just tells you what all those icons mean. It really, it, it, you'll see that repetitively through the manual. Now, what you do want to pay attention to is understanding the difference between the excludes, right? But you're going to see those, again, through the tabular part of your manual. So let's, let's jump down till we get to the really meaty part of the guidelines. All of this stuff from uh, in section A is how to understand and read the manual. Then when you get into general coding guidelines, then they're going to break it down a little bit more. And 
mostly tell you what the definitions in the codes are going to mean. How do you read those? Like sequela and late effect, right? And also laterality, which we mentioned earlier regarding the, the stroke and the non-dominant side, etc. All right, now let's get through those and we're going to then go to C. The next section in your guidelines is now we're going to go and uh, this is the largest section of your guidelines, C, chapter specific guidelines, meaning every first character. And those first characters, we try to kind of memorize what they're for. So anything that starts with a C is going to be a cancer code, even into the Ds. C, cancer, right? Easy to remember. Uh, I think of A and B as amoebas and bacterias or germs, right? And that's what that first section. So it's going to break down each one of those first characters and then the specifics about those first characters that you'll need to be aware of. So let's look at the A and B, uh, how to code for HIV, specific guidelines. You don't want to give somebody AIDS if they're HIV positive because HIV positive means they have the virus. AIDS is when they are symptomatic, that the virus has progressed to cause other problems. And there's specific uh, guidelines on how to code that. You gotta be very in tune to that. And then we go into neoplasms. It's gonna show you how to do uh, the difference between benign and malignant. It's also gonna show you uh, how to code for primary and secondary and the specific types of malignancies that you uh, sequence for. And then we get in all the way down here to uh, three, which is the rest of the Ds, blood and blood forming organ diseases. That's really quite a small chapter. And then four is endocrine system, all of your E codes. That's really large because it's every, not just diabetes, but every time you have a gland being involved from thyroids to other uh, glands. Again, we're gonna stop there and open up for questions, but when you look at each of those sections in C, it's further divided up into what it takes to code for that particular body system and any specific guidelines surrounding those. Do you need more medical certification and business training? Learn more at www.cco.us.